Yes, folks, this is your boy Vlogger Zupa, yeah. and today I'm here with Gordon, and we are outside the East India Company estate, last remaining building. We are going to find out more about the conservation area that is located in here, actually. Gordon, That's tell right. us more. Tell us more. Right, so let's set the scene. Behind us are 137, 139 Addiscombe Road. If you look carefully, there's a green plaque on the wall, which marks the historical significance of these two buildings. These were the so-called professor's cottages, so-called because the people who talked at the college, the academy, lived here. So professor's houses. The military academy was closed in 1861 when the East India Company fell upon relatively hard times because, as one might predicted, the people in the Indian subcontinent got a bit tired of British rule and being exploited, as they would see it, by institutions like the East India Company, and they rebelled, the famous Indian mutiny. And that was the end of the East India Company and the academy also yeah. collapsed. Well, that's... that's, that's, that's that's, that's what happened in short, yes. Now, of the real estate, either properties owned by the, by the academy, these two houses, plus the college gymnasium, which is now a block of flats in Havelock Road, are the only surviving bits. So these are actually good, solid, Victorian and this is why the, the, it's called the reservation conservation area. area. Conservation area. And we, uh, you want to conserve these buildings. Is on, yeah. And there's yeah. a gymnasium building that we're going to show as well. Are all that remain of the real property, real estate, as the, as the Americans say. <laughs> In its time, the East India Company is rather controversial. It's yeah. That's that's where we get <laughs> the controversial <laughs> yeah. side yeah. of the of the, the East India Company. Yeah. If you don't mind, yeah, you could tell something about the company, how it was made up, what yeah. it was for well, our viewers. Thank you. Yes. Right. The East India Company was a trading company established under royal warrant. So the Crown had a lot of input into it because it raised money for the Crown. And effectively it administered parts of India. It had its own armed forces. Armed forces. And why was there a military academy? Well, simple. They needed to train the people to go and shoot cannons at, the, shoot at, cannons, at, at yes. the natives in in India or wherever. So that is controversial to that extent. But I, th I think, once again, we shouldn't be minded to judge other people in the past by our standards. We're, fair enough, we can say we don't do things like that anymore. Um, thank, thank God we don't do things like that anymore. But that's, well said. That, that's, 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 that's how it was at the time. So part of the remit of the Alice Military College was to provide young men to go away, fight, shoot cannons at the natives and so on, and to oversee some very lucrative trading routes. Remember, all the stuff came from India. Yes. And a little footnote. Why is a certain <laughs> beer called India Pale Ale? I thought because it came from India but no chance. It was actually brewed for the people to drink in India. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I had no clue. Yeah, I was damn sure something. it was actually made. India always <laughs> made me wonder why, because it's not really like a beer uh, country, India, but why they were so good in beer. So that was actually made for the Brits yeah. in India, and that was yeah. for the Brits in India. That was some time ago, the, the, I mean, long, like long uh, in ago. the 16th century. That was already... Well, um, the British Empire included India until 1947, remember? Oh, right. When, when this country granted independence, rather foolishly in my view, along racial and religious lines, which is why there's India and Pakistan, because the two dominant faiths in the Indian subcontinent, which includes the country of Pakistan, which didn't exist up to 1947, yeah. were the, the Hindu religion and various branches of it, Buddhism 
as, a, as an offshoot, and, 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 and Islam, because long before the British went to India, conquering the place and setting up trade routes, some of the Islamic empires had expanded mm -hmm. and set up trade routes and colonised places. So, if you like, the setting up of the East India Company is, is controversial to the extent that what they did, I don't think anyone now would approve of. But it's a fact of history that they, they were set up. They perform an important function in training the young men to serve abroad. And they raised lots of revenue for, for the Crown. The East India Company was dissolved in the 1870s and doesn't exist anymore. The company itself long ceased to trade and its functions abroad were taken over by the British military and the army was disbanded and so on. Yes. So it made quite a knock in the lives of people in this country if they aspired to go to the academy. For some people that was as good as going to places like Sandhurst and all the military colleges. Right. This is called the East India Estate Conservation Area. It was set up by Croydon Council in 2008 with, with the aim of preserving some very, very good Victorian brick semi-detached that, houses. That's Victorian, right? No, this, this is original. This is... This is original. Yeah, this, this, this is... This is just about... Yeah, it was actually Victorian, yes, because Queen Victoria Victorian. was on the throne. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, but, so uh, you're, not, you're not allowed to build anything new or destroy this... No, you're allowed to build new, but you're not allowed to touch any of these old existing buildings. That's, that's in principle, that's, that's what happens, is that conservation area means we, we conserve things. We, we don't knock them down unless we have to. Now, the problem is that the conservation area was declared in 2008. Prior to that, many buildings had been altered or demolished or whatever. Yeah. Have a so, wander down Canning Road and you'll see that many old houses are long demolished and covered by blocks of flats. Mm -hmm. This is a great pity. Yeah. Once the conservation area was established, then there is a hope that what's there, that's a very nice house at 12 Elgin Road, one of the few private houses left, will be preserved for, for posterity because that's the thing, you want to conserve what's worth conserving, don't you? So, Gordon, what exactly is it? What is it? Right, here we have behind us two houses. As you'll see, it's a pair of semi-detached houses. Yeah? Yes. 137, which is here, One. is owned by the council. OK, it's owned by the ca council. Yeah, well, the freehold is owned by the council, and it's let into, into flats. All right. Yeah. Imagine renting a flat yeah. here. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> 139 was privately owned for many years and only came onto the register recently when the elderly owner went into care. It was bought by a property company, but if you have a look, property company doesn't necessarily mean oh god help us because they've made a nice restoration of, of 139. Yeah, I took a shot. They, they've, they've preserved some of the external features such as the ironwork mm -hmm. and the canopy over the front door. Right. And some developers tend to knock things like that out of the way and put in modern mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. And also they've preserved all the nice wooden sash windows next door. Right. So be probably better than council because that's it. I see double <laughs> glazing plastic windows here. <laughs> yeah, but there, there, there we are. You, you win some, you lose some, I think is the, is, is the expression. But What was the expression? You win some, you lose some. You win some, or lose some. You lose some, yeah. And what that means? It means that there are, there are advantages, but things, but things get, get, get lost nevertheless, yeah. Yeah. which is a pity, but that's life. You, everything has its cost. There are drawbacks to everything. That's right. That's right, my friend. Well, that's been well said. So, really, except that buildings and the gymnasium, there is no other remains after the famous academy. There, there is there, there is no no there is no nothing. Some no nothing. Some, some of a politically correct bent will say um, 
thank goodness for that. <laughs> but it's important to remember that this conservation area is not named after the East India Company. These buildings happen to be built on land that was originally owned by and used by the East India Company for their own purposes. And the East India Company has long gone into history, as we all shall, but we have things worth preserving. If you have time, go and have a look at 40 and 42 Elgin Road. Right, yes. These are a superb pair of Victorian red brick houses. They may be unique. <laughs> they're part of it, they're part of our history. And it's important that we, we, we hang on to our history if our history is worth preserving. And I think old buildings are, oh, they can be repurposed, they can be repaired. I think demolition of things is, 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 a, is a last resort. Right. We forgot about one thing, the other remaining building that is still standing and is doing well is the Alma Tavern, a place where the boys had fun. Yeah, although not actually part of the East India Estate, it was a place, a number of local hostelries, host shall we say, where the, where, the, where the cadets have their Friday night out or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. a very historic pub in this yeah. part of Croydon. That's why the cadets didn't like uh, the first name of the academy, which was called the East India Company Ceren Military Ceren Seminary. Yeah, <laughs> which they associated with, with priestly things. And yeah. Gordon, remember uh, the, the picture describing how the cadets had to leave the academy? What did they say? Well, they were, they were very upset about it because it was a whole way of life, not only for them, but for people of a, of a few generations before as well. This was a, this was a real wrench when, 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 when that institution vanished, when the yeah. company was wound up. But life, life goes on, doesn't it? And change is in all we see around us. Yeah. And on the poster you could actually see writing, goodbye to yeah, smoke goodbye. and drink. Yeah, that's right. So they enjoyed their smoke, they enjoyed <laughs> their drink. And ironically, given the attitude of religion towards smoking and drinking, they used to troop on a Sunday morning to St James's Church, which is along the... All right, Lares good boys. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that's now a block of flats named after the Speaker of the House of Commons, Bernard Wetherill. But it was a church. Oh, I see. And that was a local church where people on the estates, including, no doubt, the cadets, would go would go to would go, go go to worship gordon you are a source of knowledge about the area even though you don't come from southampton there will be another separate vlog about gordon himself because he's such an interesting person uh, you've got to subscribe uh, comment and watch that vlog there will be more about gordon because okay. you come from southampton don't you i come you? from southampton yes i do which is a historic enough place in its own right. Yeah, it'll be more about Southampton, well, guys. Southampton later, yeah. <laughs> right, let's go to the pub. Let's go to the pub, yeah. Oyeme, yo no creo que ya pueda más con esta soledad. No. We went round looking for evidence of the East India Estate and we saw some of the nice buildings. Yeah. Because what happened when the East India Estate closed, or rather when the East India Company closed and the Academy was, was wound up and the company then dissolved, a company called the British Land Company bought up all these all th these these roads on which these these streets were laid out. If you look at some of the deeds for these properties, you will see that they were conveyed by the East India Company in the 1860s, 1870s. Right. Cool. Right, here we have Clyde Hall, which the residents of Clyde Road 
clubbed together and preserved from the developer who wants who wished to knock it down or convert it into flats and it's still now a valuable community asset leased to a number of church organizations and other people who use it who rent it we established a company to own it we raised money to gazump the developer who proposed to buy it and knock it down so that is a major achievement for Canning and Clyde Road Residents Association. Let's, oh. let's hear it for Canning and Clyde, yeah? Well done, yeah. yeah this, How much did you have to raise? A lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. Will, will you not tell us how much? About 200,000. 200,000? It was hard work. Oh God. Yeah, it was hard work. But we had some very generous donations. 200,000 from local community yeah. to reserve part of London. Huge. Yeah, London's past, which otherwise would have gone without trace, like the church behind it. So there we are. So that, that's, our, that's our effort towards local conservation. Thank you. May, lo may local conservation long live. Hooray. <laughs> Scotland all wild, all highlands and people with chilly knees. Well, this was the church hall attached to the old church which used to be in Canning Road. There are two churches in Canning Road at one time. There's the big nice one you see, the grade one listed one, okay. and there was a smaller one behind Clyde Hall. You go work by the broom sweeping up leaves and things. But... Yes. So you go here, yeah. often. Very often. Oh, I, I, I mean, I mean, no. you, you know yeah, we are in the Alma Tavern pub, and uh, this is the place where the cadets have fun, had fun as well. They had some fun, yeah. As, as opposed to bathing in the in the cold stream up there, which can, can't be any fun on a, on a winter morning. Yeah, if if you remember, I sent you the map. You've got most of the buildings on the... There's it, a it, pond it, in it there. Yeah, there's a pond and it's fed by a, a little stream that starts or ends somewhere in the Selhurst area. There's one of these little tributes, you know, tributary rivers that run all over London. But anyway, the, you see that, that part of, of the bar there? Yeah, that's, that's uh, historic. That wooden, that wooden bar feature, that's historic. Yeah, that is... Yeah, yeah that, that, that's historic. That is historic, and, that, and, they sh and they're, they're not allowed to remove that. Anyway, anyway folks, cheers. cheers. Thanks for your company for a very enlightening and useful afternoon together. And remember to subscribe, like, and comment. Blogger Zupa. <laughs>